All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about sessions in Python. And before we get to that, uh, I just want to thank everyone that's been subscribing. And if you like this content, you know, please consider subscribing. Um, I'm no expert at programming. I, I think I can make that clear in my videos. But what I like to do is as I learn things in programming, uh, because I, as programmers, I think we're all constantly learning. I like to, you know, keep you up to date with what I am learning so we can learn together. But if you like that, feel free to subscribe. And anyway, we're just going to talk about sessions. And I did a little research because, in all truth, I didn't really know what the difference was between sessions and cookies. I've used sessions before back in my PHP days in, in college. Uh, and that was... And a little bit in ASP, but I didn't really know what was the difference between the two. So I, I looked this up, and uh, Tutorials Point has a nice little concise definition of the two. And both are used to store information. Cookies are stored only on the client side, while sessions get stored on the client side as well as the server. And then from my understanding, uh, it creates a temporary file on the server, and then what you have in your browser, or what you have on the client side, helps link it to that temporary directory that is made um, on the server that it uses to store all of your data for the session. And it says here a session ends when a user closes the browser or commonly after 30 minutes of duration. I'm not sure if you can set that in Flask. Maybe that's something I will explore and talk about in another video if I, uh, if I do find an answer. But today we're just going to talk about why I think um, we're going to use them in this app, or why I know we're going to use them in this app. And by the way, we're making a video game review web application. So if you haven't started from the beginning, you might be confused, and feel free to, to go back through all those. But in the last video, we talked about um, creating users, and then what I wanted to do was have users log in, right? Because users can log in, and then they can see all of their posts, all of their friends' posts. I'm thinking about maybe adding a like feature, you know, just like a um, social media aspect where you can like a review. And... Um, you can create reviews under your name. That's the whole reason of logging on. Right? We don't want people creating reviews under someone else's name. That's why we have people create their accounts and log on. So how do we go through from web page to web page back in the back end and store information that, that goes from one page to another? And a common way to do that is through sessions. And sessions really means um, while you're in the browser, I'm going to store this information about you that's accessible on the back end from wherever. It doesn't matter what Python I'm in, um, as long as it's as the uh, local host is running or whatever server is running, and it's still part of the same application. I am able to access that via um, sessions, and I think it might be better to just demonstrate. Uh, a quick little example of a session and this will probably be a two-parter and then we'll have a login form in part two of this so stay tuned for that but from flask we're going to import session okay and I'm trying to think how it would be the easiest example and I, I tested this on my laptop before doing this and this is what I found to be the best way so in the create user route when the, the person puts slash create user in the URL. Um, let's go ahead and make a session variable. Um, so we have if method is equal to post, that's great. So what if it's equal to get? So let's do something like if request dot method is equal to get. Uh, let's do, whoops session user is going to equal request dot args and user. So what am I doing here? This is how we access and set session variables. So this is unique for the user that's that's using this web app. The way we can access variables in the session is kind of like you would in dictionary where we have an index and we have the whole entire session um, collection. So we're creating, because this hasn't been used anywhere else as of right now, 
we're creating this user part of the session. And it's going to store uh, a bit of a query string that we're just using for demonstration. After this, I'm going to go ahead and, and just delete this because it's not necessary. It's just for me to show you guys. Um, so we have a session. We have this variable that we're calling user. And we're setting it equal to uh, the query string of the call. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that as it is. Um, and then at the end, it'll just render the create user.html template. So that's good. And then what I want to demonstrate is if we go to a different page, so if we go to the, well, that's not going to do anything, is it? What's another page that we have? OK, so I, I can't think of a good route to add this to. So what I'm going to do is right above this route, I'm going to create another one real quick. And this is just going to be one that I will delete after this video. Um, but let's have a show user route. And its method is just going to be get, because we're not going to request anything. OK. And f uh, show user. And it's just going to return, and we're going to do string interpolation. So we're going to put, oops, we're going to put an f. It's going to say hello, and then the username. So it's going to be session user, and it's going to print out that value that we stored in the session variable. Okay. So that's basically it. it's just demonstrating. Hey, if we go from one to another, how how do we pass information clearly? How do we store usernames, how do we store different data about the user as they log in. And this is what we're going to use to facilitate that. And I'm just demonstrating, hey, when we go to create user, if we have a query string, um, let's do and uh, request dot meth or args user so not equal to an empty string. How about that? Um, it's going to grab that, put it in the session variable, and then we'll change pages. And you can you can see how that variable can transfer to that page easily without us having to pass anything or make some kind of query string going to this page. It's just done in the back end for us. So let's go ahead, get this out of here. And I think we're in the wrong. Yeah. So we're going to, fantastic. We're going to have to CD into Python. And now we can run Python. Uh, what is this? API demo. So hopefully that works. Methods. Oh, duh. It's mad about me not putting an S on methods. OK. Let's ignore that. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and open. OK, yeah, let's just go ahead and open our Chrome window. And then if we look, create user is going to be where we're going to also add a query string. All right. So let's do create user. And then let's just put a username, which is going to equal demo. The session is unavailable because no secret key was set. Oh, right. OK, so this didn't work because of one key thing. So the session is going to actually encrypt the data. In order to do so, it needs a secret key. And as the name implies, this is something that should be kept secret and that no one else is going to know. So to make it a little more secure, I'm just going to have it randomly generated. and where we set it is app.secret underscore key is going to be equal to some kind of string. Um, but to make it a little more secure, I'm actually going to import OS. And I'm going to show you something that we can do. OK, so to demonstrate how I'm going to make this secret key, let's just go ahead in the console. Let's run Python. And let's import OS, just as I did up here. And now we can run something called os.urandom. And then we have to pass in some kind of size. And I'll put in 10. And you can see it makes this nice little bit string of characters that we can then use for our secret key. And if I do it again, 
something completely random. Uh, and it's not the same as it was before. Okay, so for now, our secret key, we're going to utilize that, and we're going to do uh, put an F in front of this and add our string into this. And we're going to do os.random, and then the size. I'm just going to make it 15 for our sake. I think that'll be good. Okay. I think that is everything now that we need. Let's go ahead and try running this again. OS is no attribute. Oh, it's you random. Sorry. Maybe if I did it correctly. There we go. So now if we do create. Here we go. We have it from last time. Create user question mark user equals demo. And now you can see we don't have an error. So now if I go back to the code and I see slash show user, if I go to that page, it should be able to bring back um, our user session value, which is what we set it to as demo. It should say hello demo if everything goes right. Oops. So let's go ahead and try that. So show user. There you go. It says hello demo. So now we have that variable that can be transmitted among different web pages without having to pass in the query strings or JSON or stuff like that. So that's how we're going to, in the next video, have our users log in and store their information that way while they're on the website. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, take care as always.